Is there a robot in your future? There's a robot revolution on the rise in the medical industry. My next guest says absolutely yes. He is a practicing surgeon who uses cutting edge robotics to perform surgeries and says it is the future of the industry with the potential to take jobs down the road. Not today, but eventually. Dr. Agostino Servon is here with two robots, the Da Vinci and the Vigo. I'm going to start with the one that some people may actually be familiar with, which is the Vigo. This is actually a visual interface, can roll into the hospital room, grow up to the bed, and a doctor somewhere else can then talk to the patient, right? Sure. It allows for telepresence, remote monitoring, and um, so it allows me to be at two places at one time. And, and as we look at the Vigo, I'm, my father um, years ago had surgery. He was hooked up to all kinds of machines. It's essentially no different whether a nurse at a nursing station is looking at machines. This is just a machine in a different form interfacing with my dad or a patient. Right. I mean, the true advantage is when you're at a, a remote uh, location, you can have any specialist sign in and actually create a consult and patient care. Okay, so but let's talk about Da Vinci and explain to me when we're talking about the Da Vinci robot, is it an actual robot that is a doctor manipulating the machine to perform surgery? So one of the misconceptions is a robot is doing the surgery itself. It is not doing the surgery itself. It's the doctor who's usually about less than five feet away from the patient who is uh, manipulating the robot. Okay, so show, what are these devices that you've... So, just to start out with, um, these are standard laparoscopy and standard mm -hmm. laparoscopic instruments. The nice thing is that you're sitting at, you're right there at the bedside and you're opening and closing instruments. Yes. The difficulty with it sometimes is you need to get around angles. So, one of the true advantages of the Da Vinci robot is it's got wristed instruments. And if you look closely or not, there's a set of pulleys on the inside of this that allows for different movements. It's of hard the, to see them, I would imagine. Robot. If you hold it still as they're zooming in, you can see that. So which, what's the robotic portion of this, what you're holding in your other hand? So this is, this is one of the instruments that slips onto the arm of the robot. Mm -hmm. And then there's up to four arms that you can control, the camera included, uh, including three operative arms. And so just as with minimally invasive surgery, we can do the same thing using the robot with three dimensions, high definition, um, uh, and the wristed instruments, which... And you're actually using these work. devices already. Oh, uh, you're Peconic, right? Yes. So, so you're using them. Tell me about the reaction. I would imagine, are, are the outcomes, uh, you know, they, they, they rate outcomes. Are the outcomes from the Da Vinci robot and surgeons who are using that on a greater uh, success rate than not? It's, it's probably too early to tell for most. With prostates, absolutely yes. This has been used uh, for prostatic surgery uh, for a long time, and absolutely yes. And I think as time comes, uh, we will find out that robotics will be uh, an advantage for surgeons. Now, but setting this segment up, I talked about jobs will be lost down the road. I can't imagine that's the case. You're still going to need the doctor at the control yeah, panel. I don't think so. You, yes, you still need a doctor at the control panel. Now, whether the doctor is sitting there or somewhere out somewhere else, but either way, yes, you still need a doctor. And, and so we're, we're actually looking at the device, the video right now on the monitor. What's the reaction to patients when they realize this is going to happen? Or are we so, so uh, what's the word, stayed back, we just turn it all over to the doctor and well, whatever they do is fine? There are two patients, some that are very intrigued by it. So as they come rolling into the room, they want to see where is the robot, what's its name, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they want to see. Others are fearful because they're thinking that the robot is doing this all on itself, and it's not. So finally, as we wrap up, the most important thing that people who might become patients, who might be facing these robots in the future should remember? Um, well, this is early in the evolution of the technology. Um, the technology is moving on for gallbladders, for instance, what I do is just through a belly button incision. Um, there's still beyond that, um, uh, the evolution is early. Early, uh, any companies real quick we should be investing in <laughs> that you can think of who are making these devices? Um, uh, Intuitive uh, is is got the forefront in America. Okay. Um, there's a company in Canada, Titan, that is also working for with a competitive robot. Dr. Servone, we appreciate your being here. Uh, I, you. I don't want to offend you. I hope I never see these items <laughs> uh, from an operating room, but it is a pleasure to talk about them. All the best to you. Thank you. Turning to the housing market and the age.